So, yes, there's uh, Tories' revolt over vindictive bid to banish Boris. There's civil war in the Tory party. Just when, just when Rishi needs everybody to sort of pull together, show some unity in the face of uh, the juggernaut of Keir Starmer's Labour coming to take all their seats. Uh, and, and they're not getting it. So to, uh, Boris's allies are furious that, uh, that he's been, um, you know, this committee has found him uh, guilty of lying to Parliament or, or whatever. I mean, I'd have thought it's par for the course. It's in the job description for an MP to lie to Parliament. Mislead. Uh, mislead, mis yeah. Mislead. Whatever. Did, did, you think mislead, did you think mislead already implied intention? Because the whole thing is he misled them, but he said not intentionally. Right. I always thought mislead kind of vaguely meant intentionally, but... I'm, I'm more worried that he, he misled me as a voter. Like, he promised yes. lower taxes lower immigration. Where's all that stuff? There you know, was all, that. all those things just go get higher and higher. And I don't recall him saying, I promise to lock you all in your houses and take your jobs <laughs> and make inflation really high and copy China. I didn't, that wasn't in there. Anyway, <laughs> so, well, I, think, I mean, in fairness oh. to Boris, I mean, he didn't really want to do that. And that's why I feel this whole sort of witch hunt against him isn't really fair because he didn't want to stop people going to, to parties at work anyway. Uh, but he right. had to bring, himself. Yeah, he had to bring through those rules and then obviously he broke those rules because, you know, most people did. And yeah, so I've, I've I feel like it's a bit it's a bit unfair you know his libertarian instincts were uh, were overruled by other people yeah what do you think Cressida well yeah I wish I'd been to more parties I always regret that I didn't um it's it's bad isn't it and the idea that he's not going to be able to go back to to use the cheap subsidized bar I mean it's quite a punishment isn't mm. it um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, the House of Commons, and they banned him. That, that's the part that people said was vindictive. Why did you have to take his House of Commons pass? Yes, yeah, he's banned, banished from the estate of, uh, you know, all parliamentary grounds. Is it which... sort of like a restraining order, like, can't come within yeah. 500 yards? It feels like some sort of medieval punishment. You know, you're thrown out, cast out of the city walls. Exiled. Yeah. To live with the wolves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is shocking. I mean, they, they, apparently they used the word misled 93 times, which seems kind of like overkill to me. I feel like it is a bit of Remainer revenge, isn't it? Because they've all got Boris derangement syndrome. So yeah. you look at what Boris actually did. He basically agrees with them. He's basically a liberal, pro-immigration, etc., etc. But on Brexit, he realised he had to get it done. And so now they all act like he's Trump, when really he's this liberal guy, just yeah. with this one thing of Brexit that the establishment can't stand. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah. Now Nadine Dorries and his, his other uh, allies in the Tories are going to deselect people who, who have sort of acted against him as part of this committee. Uh, so I think it's Andy Carter, is he called? Uh, who was one of the four Tory MPs on the Privileges Committee. Um, he, uh, he needs to be reselected, and they're going to make sure he doesn't get selected. It's like being picked for the football team. Do you think he can come back? What do you think, Chris? Can well, he come This is the big question. Did you say earlier you've heard a rumour that he might be uh, going into journalism? Uh, well, I've heard a, a rumour that he could potentially take over as editor of The Telegraph. That's just right. one thing I heard. I don't know how serious that is. I heard he's going to be on headliners. Yeah, yeah, when, he, when he's really got that nothing else left. Like the most likely outcome. Um, no, That'd be amazing. So, yeah. Yeah, he's uh, and apparently he's just bought a five million pound house, so he's got to have some. Uh, he's got to have a, a good job to pay his mortgage. With today's mortgage rates, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, we house. can't be too sorry for him because he will be able to go around the world talking nonsense about yeah. climate change, getting paid ridiculous fees. The most interesting thing I heard from our esteemed colleague Nigel Farage, I don't know if it's actually going to happen. He was talking about. Changing the Reform Party back to the Brexit Party, getting Boris involved and some other big hitters. Yeah. What do you think to that, Leo? Is that feasible? Well, and this is the thing that, I mean, I think the Tories have overlooked when they, when they got rid of him and they got, they got Rishi Sunak, who's a very competent, sort of technocratic politician who's, you know, quite in line with the, the woke blob that really run everything. Uh, Boris actually galvanises people to get out and vote. He, he won their biggest parliamentary majority since 1979. He was an incredible vote winner and hugely popular. And he's got that, that sort of... Uh, celebrity name recognition like Trump does in the States, which other politicians just don't. Why do they hate popular candidates so much? Because I interviewed Andrew Bridgen on my podcast. It's called The Current Thing. It doesn't matter. And he was so successful in his constituency. Like, he turned around a Labour seat, absolutely smashed it, massive majority. I think he's won three times in a row or something like that. Yeah. And then they get rid of him. Yeah. And Boris, massive majority, they get rid of him. So it's like they don't care, actually, who people vote for anymore. And then they get rid of trust, the member's choice. So it, how can they survive like that? Uh, well... I They're not going to survive. They won't, they? <laughs> <laughs> I think we can predict that. Yeah. So maybe a new, uh, like, a new right-wing super party. You think? <laughs> you make it. Don't say super party. Go, when you say right-wing super party. It sounds a bit off. That sounds mean? like Nick Stag do. <laughs> a right-wing super party. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we've probably got as much as we can out of that. But we've basically only got one story tonight. So, <laughs> what do you think of Boris's hair? Doesn't matter. We'll, we'll do another story.